Guitar and Excel, open chords, C major scale, B diminished, seventh chord intervals. Get ready because it's time for our guitar skills to Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet, but we did so in a prior section. So if you want to build this from a blank worksheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you don't necessarily need access to this workbook if looking at this from a music theory standpoint, because we'll simply use it as a tool to map out the fretboard, give us the notes, the scale, the chords that we're focused in on. If you do have access to this workbook, though, there's currently like nine tabs down below. We've got seven of these example tabs, an OG orange tab, and the practice tab. The OG orange tab representing the original worksheet we put together in a prior section, it now acting as our starting point going forward mapping out the entire fretboard giving us our entire musical alphabet in letters numbers and both having a key that can be adjusted with this green cell which adjusts the worksheets on the right hand side providing us the scale that we're in the notes in that scale and the chord constructions from the notes that are in that scale we then wanted to focus in on open position in the key of c and look at all the chord constructions from each of the notes in that scale starting of course with the c major chord which we did on the first tab mapping out the fretboard from frets one to three open position we looked at the one two three notes in the chord mapped them out fingered them discuss them in detail we then move to the four chord we skip the two and the three because we wanted to first look at the major chords which are the one four five chords so we looked at the f mapped it out in the open position defined as frets one through three discussed it in detail we went to the five chord the g chord also a major chord mapped it out discussed it in detail back to the minors then we went to the d minor the two chord mapped it out discussed it in detail then to the three chord another minor chord the e minor chord this time mapped it out then we went to the a minor chord dropping down to the six where that is located, mapped out the A minor chord, and now we're looking at the uh, the seventh chord construction, which is gonna be the diminished one, the strange one that often people ignore, but we're not gonna ignore it here. I used to do that, I used to ignore it, but I'm not doing that now because it's important. This is important and it's pretty easy to look at and there's uses for it. So don't just skip over it, let's check it out. So we talked about last time, we mapped it out on frets one through three, and then we mapped out some fingerings that we can use to finger it there. And we, uh, we also discussed how you might basically move the shape or use the shape. Now we're gonna get into some more detail in terms of the intervals, which is really interesting here because this is the reason why the diminished chord is different from the major chords and the minor chords and can give us some insights in terms of how we might use them. I also think that whenever we have just these simple chords, and this one's a simple chord to finger as well, then it's useful to just finger it and then think about it in some detail, possibly in the morning when your mind is still working. And that'll help you to get straight all these different kind of relative things that we're looking at because all this stuff kind of mushes together. And what we want to do is be able to think of them in their own, think of them so that all the concepts don't mush together, such as the numbering systems. So let's look at the numbering systems. We'll just list them first. First, we need some kind of system to label all the individual notes in the musical alphabet. We could do that with letters, but we can also do that with numbers. We then are going to have a numbering system that's going to be mapping out the relative positions of the notes in the scale. In this case, the C major scale, seven of the 12 notes then being mapped out. We can use a Roman numeral system. Roman numerals, those crazy Romans, have very difficult numbers to write, but you can capitalize them and make them lowercase, which is kind of cool, giving you another level of meaning, which can allow us to make the capital numbers the uh, major chords and the small numbers, or lowercase, the minor chords. And then the little dot means it's kind of like a minor chord with a third, but then it has the diminished on it. And then we have a numbering system with regards to the placement of the notes relative to the first note in the chord, not relative to the scale. And we'll focus on that numbering system 
and then we can talk about the intervals between the first note in the scale and, and the other notes that are in the scale, which is important because those intervals are what is causing the differences between major, minor, diminished, and so on. So first, let's just give a quick recap of this uh, system in terms of how we're naming the notes. Back to the OG tab. We're going to go to the OG tab, and this is our musical alphabet in letters. We can see that if you count up in letters and you just look at the key of C, it's pretty easy to go one way, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. But when you go backwards, it's a little bit difficult just to do it. Try it. Go to uh, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. You could do that, but it's a little bit difficult to do just that. If you add the sharps and the flats, when you go up the musical alphabet, you're usually going up and sharping things. So you got A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp. And then when you go down, you'd have to flat it. A flat, G, G, uh, G flat, F, E, D, <laughs> E flat, D, D flat. You gotta remember where there's not a sharp and a flat and whatnot. That gets difficult. It's also difficult to look at the intervals when I'm trying to say how far of an absolute distance, and you can think of these as basically distances, how far in distances, if I'm, if I'm comparing it to like miles, is the E from the A. Well, it's, it's kind of difficult to do that if I have to count it on my fingers and then remember where the sharps and flats are and whatnot. If you number them, however, it's pretty easy to do. We can just do some subtraction there and we can find the difference. So I, highly, I really think it's useful to number them. And so I'm going to uh, emphasize that here. I know that, so how would you do that? We'll just number them. These are absolute numbers. So the A is a one, the A sharp or B flat is a two. I'm not going to distinguish between sharps and flats because we're trying to get an easy numbering system that we can then just use some simple math with, which could be useful. So you want to learn the letters too. I'm not saying this replaces the letters. I'm just saying it would be an, an added thing that would be useful. A B is a three, C is a four, a C sharp five, a D is a six, D sharp or E flat seven, E is an F, I, I'm sorry, E is an F, E is an eight, uh, F is a nine, F sharp or G flat 10, uh, G is 11, and then the G sharp or A flat is going to be the 12, and then it goes back to the 1. So then we used that numbering system to construct our worksheet on the right-hand side using the formula of whole step, whole step, two notes, two notes, half step, one note, whole step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So that's going to be our formula here. You can see that with numbers, how easy it is to do. You could just say, if I had numbers, I don't have to count on my fingers. I don't have to go like C, like, okay, C, uh, D, you, you know, I, I could just say, well, it's, it's, at a, it's at a four, and then it's going to go to a five, six, right? Instead of going C, C sharp, uh, D, right, on my fingers. And then I can know that a six is a D. Obviously to do that, you'd have to memorize that a six is a D. Six plus two is eight, eight is an E. Eight plus one is nine, nine is an F. Nine plus two is 11, 11 is a G. 11 plus two around the horn, because there's only 12 notes in the musical alphabets, 12 back to one, one is an A. One plus two is three, a three is a B. Three plus one is four, four is a C, and we're back home again. Those now being the notes in our construction over here, there we have them. Then we're going to number these notes in terms of the relative positions in the scale being seven notes out of the 12. So let's go back over here. That's where we are here. We've got our numbering system that we have created from the 12 notes that are now uh, the seven notes. Then we numbered them over here with the capital and lowercase, the capitals representing the or uppercase are representing the major chord constructions. And it just so happens that if you start on the C and you take every other note, that's how we construct the chord, C, E, G, then it ends up to be a major chord construction. Why? Because of the intervals. So that's what we'll get into now. If you do that starting with an F, this, 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 every other note happens to end up with a major construction. Why? Because of the intervals that we'll talk about now. Same with the G. And we talked about the minors, same chord construction. We start with a D, every other note, boom, 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 D, F, A. But it ends up to be a minor chord construction indicated by the lowercase. Why? Because of the intervals. Now, note down here, we have the, the, the thirds circle. 
So this is just taking every other note uh, in the circle up top, circle of thirds, you could call it, or something like that. And that actually makes it a little bit easier because now I could say, okay, I'm, I'm just going to take this, these three that are closest to each other, and that's my C, C, uh, E, G. So I don't have to go C, E, G. I could just take my circle of thirds. I could start on the B over here, and I can go, there's my B, there's my D, there's my F, right? I could go B, D, F. So I'm trying to add that into my worksheet. I haven't put it everywhere, but I think I might put that into the master worksheet over here. I kind of squeezed it in there, as you can see. So now what we would like to do is concentrate on the interval. So I, this is something I would kind of just practice doing whenever you learn a new chord and just think, okay, if I finger that chord and we're going to finger it on the one, uh, three, five, right? So here's the one, three, five. Remember that these positions mean the, the one relative to the chord. So it's, so it's not one relative to the scale. That would be a C. It's one relative to the chord, which is a B. And you can think of that chord as, as what's the relative scale to that chord, which would be over here, the Lokian. So there's your B and uh, then the third, if I went to the, to the relative mode of Lokian, would be a D, right? And then, I, and then if I go to the fifth, the relative is the Lokian of an F. But I don't want to have to remember the Lokian scale, which is kind of a weird scale that most people don't memorize, but it would be cool if you could. What I want to do is know by the intervals, which is what we're talking about here, what the difference is between the the majors, the minors, and uh, the diminished. So we can just finger this out and then look at those intervals. So here's the B in green, that's going to be the root. And then we have the third right here. And then we have the fifth here. So this is one way that you can play it. And this is a nice movable shape. And you can mute that G pretty easily if you didn't want to ring it out. Although you could ring it out if you're playing in the key of C because it would kind of fit at least in the key. All right, so then I would go through each of these and first just think about the one, three, five, which is the one, three, five of this diminished chord. And so I could say, okay, the first finger, if I look at it here, I'm gonna copy this, see if I could focus in on it. It's gonna be boom with the yellow. That's my focusing color. So then I'm gonna say that that one is uh, the root. So that's gonna be the root or the one. And then I'm gonna go, okay, down one, string and over one string is going to be the fifth. So I'm going to say that's the fifth. Now that is the important interval that kind of distinguishes or one of them that distinguishes the main one that distinguishes that's different between both the majors and the minor. That's not either a minor or a major interval. That's going to be this diminished kind of interval. And remember, you can kind of see that like if I looked at an A, this would be the power chord. A lot of our constructions, you're gonna see that shape because that's the, the fifth interval. With a, with a diminished, we flat the fifth. You can think that's one way that you can think of it. Why do we flat the fifth? Because that's just how it happens to work out when we build our major construction and take every other note from the seventh note, it ends up with a flat fifth. So we're not really flatting the fifth. It's not like we're flatting the fifth in order to make it. We're, we're flatting the fifth because that's what happens when you construct our normal chord based on the seventh note. It ends up with an interval of not seven notes, but six notes. So from, a, from our standpoint, it would be, okay, that would be for both major and minor. And then I'm going to flat the fifth. Flatting just means I'm going to go back a step. So it's not, it doesn't, and remember the flatting, when I say flat, we use the sharps and flats to name chords. So you could say like, again, if there were two Ds, for example, if there was a D flat and a D in the scale, we didn't want, we don't want two Ds. So, so we might then call one of those Ds a C sharp, right? So that's one reason you have sharps and flats. And then if I use it as a verb to flat something or to sharp something, the flat just means... I'm taking it back and the sharpening means I'm going to take it up, right? So I'm flatting it. So I'm going to take it, take this back. So that's going to be our characteristic shape that you want to basically see. Anytime you see that interval, except between these two strings, because of the funny relationship, in which case it would be those two strings, 
the, anytime you see that relationship, that's going to give you that kind of distinctive sound, which isn't bad necessarily, right? Although it's kind of strange, right? And then, but it does have that, it has a lot of uh, potential for resolution. So that's the big one. And then we're going to go down here and then I'm like, okay, and there's the, the, the uh, third. So there's the third and boom. So that's going to be my chord construction. Now you might try to compare this. Like if I was to make a normal minor type of chord, because you're saying it's like, okay, it's kind of a, a lowercase thing. Maybe that means it's close to like a minor. So if I did like a minor chord construction, it would look like this, right? On this string. In other words, here's remember, this is my A minor. And then I can make that into a bar chord by changing these fingers. So it would look like that if I had to bar this off, if I just move this up to a B, it would look like that. That would be my minor uh, bar chord construction off of this string, the B being my root. And so what is happening here? Well, I still have my third is, is right here. So there's my, my third is uh, uh, this one, right? And so, but now, and this, this note right here is a duplicate note. So I have two of the Bs, so I can remove that, and then I'm flatting the fifth. So I'm flatting the fifth, so it looks kind of like that, but it might be easier to play. You could play it like that, but it might be easier to play switching these two fingers up and playing it like that. Actually, you might want to experiment with both of those ways of playing it, because then if you play it this way, you could pick up that added note of here if you, if you wanted to do that. But I usually think that's an easier one to, to see this relationship between these two strings. So in any case, so it's kind of like the minor, we kind of converted the minor and then flatted the fifth. Because if it was a major construction, it would look like, it would look like this, right? Whereas the third, the third would be different. So this is, the third is similar to the minor, and then you got the funny thing going on uh, with the fifth. All right, so then the next thing I would do is, is actually map out the intervals of, of each of the notes. So if I start on uh, the, the one note over here, and I'm going to use a little bit of math, and this is why it's, I think it's useful to name the notes as numbers. Name the notes as numbers. All right, so then we can say, because then we could say like, uh, this is, I'll, I'll go through each of these and I would do this with the worksheet and then try to do it without the worksheet, right? I'm gonna say, well, this is relative position one. Why do I say it's relative? It's relative not to the scale that it's in, it's relative to the one note of the chord, which you can think of as relative to the related mode, but I'm just gonna say it's relative to the one note. It's relative position one of note three, which is a B, uh, which is of course, note three or a B. So then I'm gonna go to this one and say, okay, there's, my fifth so that's going to be over here and now you'll this these numbers up here represent the intervals between the one note and all of the other notes for the first chord in the worksheet so that means this is for a c major chord so i didn't put an interval for seven intervals because it would make a long worksheet what i'm going to do instead is try to say i'm going to compare everything to the the one chord so i'm going to say over here these notes are what the intervals are for the one chord which chords are different if i was to look at the minor chords it would be only the three out of these three the one three five only the three would be different instead of four notes away it would be three notes away over here with the diminished i also made it yellow because it's going to be different as well it's not going to be seven notes away as has been all other fifths up until this point, whether they be major or minor, but instead it's going to be six notes away. So now I'm going to say, okay, there's, there's my, not my seven note away, but there's my flattened six note away. And you can call it a diminished fifth if you want, because now I'm going to try to name that uh, specifically as a diminished chord and name it that it's a different interval, a six note away interval of note three, which is a B. So I'm gonna say, okay, three plus six is gonna give us nine, note number nine is an F. So that's gonna be 
uh, that one, and then I can go down to this one, which is going to be the do 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 do, and then do 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 do. This is going to be a D, and the D is not four notes away. That's what it would be if it was a major chord construction on chord one. It's similar to the minors and that it's different. It's a three note away. Not a, you could call it a minor third because that's kind of another name for the distance, three notes away or a whole step and a half step. Uh, so you could call it a three note away minor third for the diminished. So you might call it a diminished third if you want as well. But that minor third, you might still keep the minor third even though it's on the diminished chord because that's kind of the name of the, of the interval. Uh, of it so but you could throw in there that it's a diminished third when you're trying to map it in your mind as well and so and so of note three which is a b so it's going to be uh three of a b plus three notes away is going to be six and six is a d so notice what we're uh so so six is a d and remember what we're not doing here is i'm not saying this is the fifth of the note in this scale right this is like for example this wasn't the fifth of a g this would be the fifth of its related scale which in this case we can say the lokian scale the modal same notes but starting with the one being uh the seven right and that would that would mean the fifth in that way would be the uh f and then the third over here would be the d Okay, let's also think about this on one string because sometimes I think that's easier to see as well. So if I was to say, okay, let's go back to this this one. What does it mean to be a seven note away fifth? So again, the fifth represents its relative place in its relative scale, five notes away. But I can define it not by that, but by its interval, which is, I'm sorry, not seven notes away, but rather six notes because that's that's the distinguishing factor. So if I started on a B and I went six notes up, I'd go one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. We get here. That's an F. And so that's going to be an F. And so that's but that doesn't help me to play it over here. Instead, I'm going to use this F. So that's an F too. Those are the same notes. So how are they related? Well, on the fretboard, it'd be one, two, three, four, five strings up the fretboard and one string toward the ceiling, you get to the same note. So if I do the third, you get a similar kind of thing. This is not a four note away, but rather it's a three note away, like minor third. So I'm starting from the root, which is the B. And if I went three notes away from the B, one, two, three, I would end up here, which is gonna be a D. So, so that D in this, are two Ds, right? So you can start to kind of map map out the fretboard a little bit that way when you start looking at these uh, types of intervals that way as well. So let's do that like a little bit faster. If I was to finger this, again, I'm going to say, okay, let's go back to the one and then say this is going to be, I'm just going to hold that down and say, okay, that's relative position uh, one of note three, which is a B. So, right, relative position one of note three B, which is note three a B. And then I'm going to go here and say, okay, then this one is going to be do, 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 do. this one is relative position, not seven notes away, but because it's different, it's flatted. This is six notes away, relative position, six note away, flatted, diminished, <laughs> fifth, right? And then, and then I could say, and of note three, which is a B. So three plus six is going to give me nine and note number nine is an F. And then I can go, okay. And then this one is going to be, duh, 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 duh. and I can say, this is not four notes away, but it's three notes away because it's different from note number one, although it's the same as two, three, and six. And I can call it still a minor third. So it's a three note away minor third, even though this isn't a minor chord, because I'm thinking of that minor third as a, a name of distance, not the name of the chord. It's a minor third, which is three notes or a half step and a whole step, whole step and a half step, right? So minor third of 
note three, which is a B. So then I can say, okay, three plus three gives me six and note number six is a D. So you see how, how if you, if you did, if you just take a little bit of time and just map that out, then you'll start to practice the intervals. And by distinguishing that this is a different interval than the one, you're solidifying not only the diminished, but you're also solidifying the, the intervals for the one, which you're comparing it to as well. This one's different. And so by distinguishing the differences, you're also distinguishing or defining in your mind both the major chords and the minor chord. So then you could start to say, well, what if I added other things and you could work with you know other uh, types of intervals here. So if I added like an F up top, so it looks something like that. And then you could start to say, well, that F would be would be another not seven note away, but six note away because it's flatted. Six note away, diminished, uh, f diminished uh, 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 fifth of note three, which is a B. So that's going to be three plus uh, six, which is nine, and nine is an F. And then you can also start to think about these relative positions and say, well, wait a sec, the fifth, like if this, when I was looking at the fifth before and I looked above the root note, the fifth is always right above it, whether it be a major or minor construction, because the fifth was always seven notes away on major and minor constructions. Now here, of course, the fifth isn't going to be the same because the interval is different. And therefore the fifth on the diminished, if I was to go up, is up a string and back a string is where you're going to find the fifth. Just like when you find the fifth below, the fifth is not down one string and over two strings like normal on both major and minor, but down one string and over uh, one string here. And so then you can, you can practice that with other uh, intervals as well. You can, of course, also add notes to a major scale. So for example, you could, you could take your, uh, your major scale and you can add the notes in there like we talked about before. Meaning, for example, what if I ring out this G in there and you can, you know, test that out, ring that out. Now, normally when you're testing this stuff out, you're using it to, to go back to the C, right? You're probably not just going to be jamming unless you're jamming and Loki in, right? But, but so you can test out what kind of things might work well as I resolve. Back to the C, right? See, all I'm doing is taking my fingers off and on these positions. And then, then if you analyze that, you can say, okay, well, what am I doing there? Well, I'm taking, then I, I'm utilizing these strings and then I'm picking up the, the 13 right here. Oh no, what in the world did, did it just happened? Excel's trying to get me, trying to get me upset. It's trying to pick a fight with me, but it's not going to happen because I'm totally calm. You'd have a better chance, Excel, of picking a booger after dinner out of the nose of the booger monster than to pick a fight with me because I'm not taking the bait, man. The booger monster being kind of like the cookie monster, but with boogers. Let's copy this and put it over here. So there's the G uh, that we were talking about. And then of course you could experiment with that, uh, with the other fingerings up top, right? And so you could experiment with this one. Now we kind of experimented a little bit with just the strumming of it. And then if you were to analyze each of these, now you could say, okay, that then I would be going back and forth to uh, the A if I, if I, was to, to lift up that thing. And, and then you can, and you can look at the intervals then. I'm not gonna get into the intervals in here in detail right now. We might dive into that later. But right now I just wanna note that these three intervals are fairly straightforward and they can be indicated with the Roman numerals, right? Because the uppercase Roman numerals are the majors versus the lower cases of the minors. And that's given you an indication from a, a standpoint of intervals that the third interval is going to be 
is 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 going to be the one that is different uh, between the two. That's the major defining factor. Boom. However, when you get into these other ones, when you when you get up above the seven, notice that that it's not going to be the same. You just can't say it's a major or a minor. You're going to have to map out the intervals per position, right? The two, even though it's a minor, might have different intervals than the six. The one might have different intervals than the five, even though they're ma major chord constructions. And that's where it gets a little bit more confusing when you start looking at the intervals up top. Also, just want to uh, note that when we look at these intervals up top, that I basically said that these, let's go up here to see this. I said that that these intervals kind of relate to its related chord where you say, where we saw the one, we saw the three, and we saw the five, it's related scale. But when I get up, this, I could see the seven right there. There's the seven, which is an A, so that makes sense. But then what are we doing with this? What are we doing with this nine? There's only seven notes in here. So remember what's happening is it's just going around the horn again and getting back to the C, which is the two. So we don't, we don't want to call it the two because we're trying to keep on going up from one, three, seven. So now, so you, but you can think about it as the two being equivalent to the nine, right? The, they're the same, all right? And then if I went up two more again, I end up at an E, that's the 11 which is equivalent to the four, right? And if I went up again, the 13, you get to the G that's equivalent here. So, so that's, I, I don't want to dive into that in a lot of detail right now, but if you want to start diving into that stuff, then I just want to kind of point that out here. And you can, you could see that if you take every other note in, in our circle here. And if you just kept going around, if you kept going around, you would pick up then the notes that you didn't pick up last time, but instead of saying, saying it's the two, you're going to say it's a nine, right? And you can also see that if you take our circle of thirds down here, where if I was to start on on uh, the B, for example, so now my B is here, then I could just keep going around. So it's going to be uh, the B, there's the D, there's the F, there's the A, there's the C, there's the E, there's the G. So notice on this construction, it's easy for me just to see, you know, all of the notes. But just remember when we start naming the notes from nine to 13, you're using numbers that aren't in the scale. And you can think of them again as equivalent to the numbers that are in the scale, right? All right, so we'll talk more, maybe more about that later.